So we've used twice as much gas in port here than it took getting here. And I hate the sound of the engine, so let's turn them off. That's much better. So why are we running the engine so much? Two of our solar panels are dead. After 23 months, dead. We gotta buy two more solar panels and now we don't have any way to charge the batteries. I have no charger for the boat, so it's not like we can plug it in in a marina. I have never had my boat in a slip. That's living la vida broken, man. This is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Sure, it's a sale. Go. Mm -hmm. Before we start any of work, this is necessary because somebody gets a little grumpy without food. <laughs> okay, just making sure. At first you might think that fish is great, that's kind of funky, isn't it? Yeah, it is kind of funky. Until you, oh, I guess, get used to it or are too lazy to cook. Until you have an ceballado from Ecuador. Yeah, we, I mean, we should do this already. I forgot all about my problems. If I ever opened a restaurant, I would want to open one that only serves breakfast. And only serves one thing. This is my old alternator. This is a 35 amp alternator, and he put this piece in it that, was, that needed to be replaced. This was bad. This is the stator? I'm not really sure. I think this is the stator. This one's going to go back on the engine because the other one I put on was too big. This was 40 bucks. And then here's our other big one that he's looking at to see if there's some kind of problem inside because it's really bogging the motor down. I can't believe how much it's bogging it down, and I, it, that. In the book, it says that this one's rated, that that motor is rated for this alter. So what did we do today and what happened? Where are we now? We left about to get the fuses that James, James blew up this morning. The fine dressing, he freaked he fucked the boat up already, irreparably. But when we picked up the starter and the uh, alternator, the guy told us that he was going to get us uh, fuses. We're supposed to go by there tonight. Oh, tonight? Today. He we said can that go by there tomorrow, whatever. It he said he would try, try today? Yeah, he said uh, at, after lunch he will, he will try and go. Well, that's a good knife too, what is it that? That's a big old freaking one man. Take a sip, let me see. That was a good day, James. <laughs> yeah, you some. So we're in the yacht club in Ecuador, and this is our kind of um, hangout station, working station, 
waiting for someone to drive us back to the boat because we have no dinghy station. You're cute. What's your name? I'm Henry. Oh, thanks, Henry. How are you doing today? <laughs> cute as usual. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going? We're going to the wood shop. And? And we're going to get some PVC tubing pipes. Why? So that we can, we, we have the plan to make seats in the back of Zingaro to extend the cockpit a little and also while we're navigating, sailing, no not navigating, while we're sailing um, that we can sit outside and kind of have the view over the sail on the horizon and not get so wet. One, two, three, go! So what did we get? We got piece of marine ply, that's the thickness of the deck. We got some pieces of PVC so we can make a new chair in the back, which is gonna be super cool. We're gonna cut out with this cardboard that we got from the place. We're gonna cut out the shape that we want for the seat to be, and then we're gonna build a frame around that with this. A few hours later, this is what we got. Good morning from Zingaro. I don't know if that story still makes sense to you. We unscrewed the fridge from the from the boat two days ago, and then we started a new project. The seats outside, which are still not finished. And now we're back to the fridge project. We're trying to get uh, the old propane fridge off the boat because it's bothering uh, the hell out of us because it's always empty, it seems, and all our food is always going bad because it just turns off as soon as the gas is out and we need new gas every two weeks and it's just a pain. Now we took the pop top off, which was not as easy as it could have been, but James called Richard, the guy that built the pop top, and he told him how to unscrew the bolts, I guess. And now it's kind of off, and we're ready to lift the fridge off the boat, finally. So sorry that we're so bad at uh, telling stories, we're kind of all over the place. Right in real life as well, so <laughs> it's hard to keep up with our plans. Yeah, we're going to Hawaii. Hey, from Ecuador. That's like kind of our storytelling. <laughs> Hi, from Ecuador. Good morning. This is our fridge project. So it didn't fit through the door. I know what you're thinking. That was a pretty close call. It's going to be a lot of space. What is our plan with that space, James? We are going to build a nav station yes. and a little editing station and we're not going to have a fridge for now. I think it's impossible to find a 12 volt fridge here so we're just going to go fridgeless for a little while. All right. Oh boy. This looks halfway decent. going on I just finally fixed the alternator problem so this is what what I had I had the port the I had the starboard alternator go out well I took the starboard alternator out and I put in my spare alternator and which which I thought was the same one but it's actually a bigger one is a 55 amp versus a 35 amp and the, the engine is kind of old and it's it won't run it and the propeller at the same time because it takes some of the F efficiency of the engine to run that big belt with the driving the alternator and then it takes some efficiency to go through a reduction gear where it goes from two to one and it, it starts spinning the shaft so the shaft is spinning uh, half as fast as the engine is spinning and it just didn't have enough power so I got alternators we got 90 amps of charging power now 55 and 35 instead of 70 amps so we increased our total amperage power by I don't know what, like 35%, 30, 30%, 35%, something like that. And uh, I'm super excited about that. That's gonna be killer. 
So the only thing is we need to run the batteries like every other day now. I'm sorry, we need to run the engines like every other day now. Now we are going to go to Quito, which is the capital here. It's nine hours away just to buy solar panels. And I might try to climb the highest mountain in, in Ecuador. Like some, kind of, like some kind of madman. Today marks our third week here. And we've done a lot of work. We actually really have. I've gotten like most of the major work done for, for the boat. We've gotten four videos published, which is a good thing. Um, we've also, we've done a lot of work, but there's a lot of work left to do. We need to buy a bunch of crap, solar, new dinghy, outboard, and uh, we were thinking about making a seat back here, so we mocked up this um, with PVC tubing, this, this kind of mock-up seat. And we're gonna we're gonna see about putting getting it made out of aluminum and then putting it in and I'm kind of hopping from job to job because there's a lot of shit going on we got to clean the bottom we got to finish the deck I, I, I've got a bunch of holes in the deck that I'm drilling I'm drilling out the, all the old hardware that was made to build the boat and there's like probably a hundred and and then we got to paint it what are those pans about these are my da dun da duns because well da dun da dun so uh, yeah what am I gonna do? It's not every day you can get something like this. You can't buy that at the store. I think this didn't turn out too bad. Yeah. It looks cool just floating there in this picture. I think it's way too high. No way, dude. This is like what, right where your uh, calves end, you know? Sailing! We would sit with our arms right at the end and our feet here. Stay there. <laughs> I want to see it from this angle. It yeah. looks kind of cool. I like it once it's all done and straight and out of aluminum and stuff. What I imagine is this is the seat and it's gonna have three support bars. There's gonna be one here going to the aft, probably this side actually, yeah, right here. And then another one right here. Or maybe even, you could do it down, down to the boat, down here. Yeah. The last one would be right here. Whoa. Then this one would be super, super strong. Ago, and he's been closed every day since. We're hoping to catch him today and get our sail cover back because we need it. Este lado, uh, it looks great. He did great work. Buen trabajo, mano. He did double stitching on the zipper, which is what I was hoping he would do because it ripped out real bad. And then he's widening the back because I made it too small. So what he's going to do is he's going to add a strip to it to make it progressively wider, but you're not really going to be able to tell. So we're at Freddy's woodshop right now, and he's going to make us our navigation station table. And also we're going to replace the ladders on the port side of the boat because they're pretty messed up from the salt water intrusion. The salt water came down the hatches and right on the stairs and that was made out of plywood, 30 years old. Um, so it wasn't, it couldn't withstand the, the salt water and it's delaminating, I don't know if that's the right word, it's, you know, it's splitting up. So we want that replaced and we're figuring out with wood. There is one that's called Amarillo and it's got really nice patterns in them. 
So we're thinking about not making a teak like the rest of the boat, but making it in amarillo. This is called balsamo, and when it's finished, you get like this really pretty gold and shiny in there. And it's super, super pretty, and it smells like anise. It smells so good. I want my whole boat to be built out of this. <laughs> so let's, oh, hey, so that is look. just oil. Yeah. I'm surprised now because almost much the color. Yeah. Okay, so it's just oiled and, and um, Yes, but this one okay. makes a different uh, color. I don't know why. You see the difference? Wow. No. Maybe it's because of that. I think these are older trees. And these are like younger trees because around here we got ticks like for 20 years uh -huh. to, to now. So mm, maybe th this is why. Okay, well then let's just use this because the rest of the boat is all this stuff. So mm -hmm. we might as well just use that, reuse okay. that for the trim. I fixed this problem now, but this... I, the humidity inside there. There's nothing I can do yeah, because no, I imagine it's that. plywood. I can't, you know, I can probably glue them back together, but... No, it's gonna... No, I need it's a not going to work. Right. And I want, it, I want it out of some strong wood. Beautiful, because that's more work for me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, because I made this at home and wasn't at the boat when I made it, my, mo my mother and I made it together, it was not quite perfect. It didn't fit perfectly. I didn't take the measurements correctly, and the back end was a little tight, and it just ended up ripping out the zipper and ripping out all the teeth. So this guy, what he did was he changed the zipper, and uh, he gave me a little flap to keep it shut in the front. And then I used my kit that Ed gave me. Thank you, Ed. That's my kit. This is grommets. These are those little, little um, turny dealy thingies. And so the guy sewed in a piece to gradually extend the width of the aft section of the sail cover. And then I went back and replaced a few of the grommets and made it a little stronger. And hopefully it'll last a while now.